Are you ready? Let me just get in the right headspace real quick. Oh my god. If you would have told me at the beginning of the season that the Sabres are getting above average goaltending, I would have thought they'd be in a playoff spot right now. Uh, oh my god. Why am I here? Why am I talking to you? Why am I talking to you, Jonah? You know we've done 50 of these things now. That's crazy. You know what? I'm sorry. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Not much has changed from uh, episode one to now. <laughs> no, it seems like we're in the in the same place we were two years ago. Some might say a worse position. Yeah. Yeah, d- probably. Well, debatable, but also kind of. Yes. Does it feel like it's better? No. On paper. On, on uh, Yeah, on paper it feels like it's better, but... In the win and loss column, it's not better. It's it's about the same. Could be worse. Could be much better. That's the that's the issue. But just I, I'm at a loss for words. I don't even know where to go. I don't know what direction to point my brain in right now. Like I just want to go off on like I just want to make excuses for this team that the injuries are the reason that they're not winning. That they can't string two wins together. That. The bottom six looks like hot garbage on paper. On paper, the RKO line has been great, but it's just it, it's nothing about this ro- nothing about this lineup just screams exciting to me. It's just all boring. That's the worst part. It's, it's so they're boring. so uninteresting right now. It's the worst. Like it's it's the worst part. Like if you're tuning into a game, and if Devin Levi isn't even starting, the only player I'm interested in is Zach Benson yeah really it's at that point which is <laughs> I'll let Paterka and Middlestat too but, but they're good but they're just like but they're just like okay these guys are good like, yeah. there's nothing else to it I agree they've yeah. they've become my worst nightmare they've turned into the New York Islanders <laughs> they wish they were the New York Islanders. They, I was gonna say New York Islanders like Johnny wishes that. they win games man with how uninteresting they are they're they're the New York Islanders without putting wins in the win column which is way no, worse they're, too. They're the New York Islanders, but they can't play defense. I mean, has the defense been better? Let's let's talk about that. Has the defense been better from last year? Yes, I agree. It also but has not, been. It's not even. But it's, not, it's, it, it's objectively better. But does it outweigh? No. What we've lost? The Absolutely off, not. Off, it wasn't worth it. It was not worth it. If I could press the go back button right now, I I would not complain. About the off season, about we need to be a more structurally sound defensive team. I mean, we sh- if it was worth sacrificing that, I mean, like it's 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 bad. It's so bad. <laughs> Sam Ventura and all the uh, analytic boys must be just <laughs> losing their minds. They're like, "Oh crap, we messed up. <laughs> we messed up." Mm-hmm. Looking at all of all the advanced numbers. Oh, that chart. W- what chart was that? The one with. Like, it was just some micro, yeah. It was just some of their micros from all three zones, and it's just a bunch of their micro stats. And it's so everything bad. is down. Everything, everything has turned on a dime. Not just down, like as in like regressed from last year. It has gone the complete opposite direction. That's how bad it is. Kyle Oposo has been okay. He's been all, he's been okay. Okay. Silver lining. Silver lining. He's been all right. He's been all right. I like that line. That I think, line's been good. I think he's he's earning himself a new contract. No. Yes, no, I agree. Uh uh-uh. uh. No. Few years Sorry. extension. Get, move Pay him, him now. Move him into the Jason Spezza role, please. I want him to be a part of this organization so bad, but I just Do you? Yes. Just not in an on ice role. If he can get us to the end of the season playing well, I'm happy, but this team this this roster with being how uninspiring it is, it just needs an over it needs a facelift. The core is there. It just needs a facelift. You need to get like who's I would I'm gonna say out of the forwards right now, who is expendable at the end of the season? By if you have any sliver of a doubt in your mind, who could you just get rid of? Actually, I was thinking if about this the doubt. other day. I was thinking of like I, I do believe I know we're completely off our docket, by the way. Like we are all over the place right now. But I was <laughs> this is not how I intended that. We're spiraling. I was yeah. thinking the other day. Like I do think there's going to be a lot of change with that roster next year, no matter how this season goes. But and I was what? thinking, I, well, I was thinking, who are the untouchables that will absolutely be in the lineup? It'll, It'll be 
Tage, Skinner, Tuck, Quinn, Paterka, Cousins. Cousins. So their entire Benson. top six. The yeah. entire top six well, and Benson. I, you know what? I don't think Skinner should be an untouchable, but his contract is. It's he's, an, not, he's not going anywhere. His, yeah, his contract well, I know that. Is, And he's their yeah. best offensive player right yeah. now. So there's seven right there. After that, everybody should – there's no other untouchables on the board. There's no untouchables, but they're not going to trade Middlestat. Well, they're not going anywhere. Oh yeah, Mitts they're not too. going. They're not. They're not going to trade Greenway. And so Greenway. your entire top nine is locked in. You're not trading Darlene, obviously. Not Power. You're not trading Samuelson, and I mean, Yoki Haru has probably been your most consistent guy, maybe aside from Power. So again, it's so weird. It's, your it's entire fair. your entire top nine and top four is locked in, and not going anywhere. Like maybe maybe you use Middlestat in a bigger trade, or maybe you use Greenway. But you're not touching that top six. You're not touching that top four, really. Maybe you'll add a maybe you'll add another top four piece, which they probably should do. But other than that, it's it's interesting because it's like it's it's there, and maybe I I really think injuries are really they're really killing this team right now. The the entire the top nine we just mentioned haven't been healthy at the same part of the season yet. We have yet to see. The t- first line, Skinner, t- Skinner, Tuck, Thompson, uh, the kid line, Paterka, Quinn, and Cousins, Benson, and Middlestat all play in one game this year. And yes, that's mostly because Quinn's been out, but also it's been a revolving door of injuries that have just wiped this team out. And I, any semblance of, you know, chemistry or gel, that went out the window way back when Donnie was mixing up the lines, and it's gotten even worse since all the injuries are there. It's like there's nothing. There's nothing exciting about this team because there's just – you don't know what you're getting every night. You don't. You, it could just be a big egg, or it could be, you know, oh, the good they won, but there's still it's nothing exciting. Well, they are consistently inconsistent. Ever, I think 95% of the fan base knew they were going to lose to the Coyotes after they just beat Vegas. I, yeah. That's a fact. Yeah, everyone was joking about it, but deep down we knew. Mm-hmm. And you talk about injuries. The the coach uttered the words, Tage came back early after the Vegas game. Mm-hmm. Alex Tuck clearly came back early. He didn't do any rehab skates. And two games later, he's he re-injured himself. He might play against Columbus tomorrow. He might not. He's fighting through that. And Jack Lynn's obviously out. Now Jeff Skinner has been concussed. So, and Jack Quinn might be coming back, but he might be coming back early. Yeah, we don't know. He he could be coming back because this is ahead of schedule. This is ahead of schedule. Mm-hmm. This is the, this is way ahead of schedule. This is the one that I like. You could rush a player back from injury in some instances, but with this injury, you do not want to rush him back because if if he max Pacioretty's this, it is over. And don't worry, he was only taking line rushes on the top line. <sighs> mm-hmm. But. Sabres he, medical staff, which is like doesn't need which, which, which is like fine. Like I get it. Like if he can't come back and produce at the same rate he was at last year, then why is he even playing? Right. So you might as well be like, okay, he's on the top. You might as well throw him on the top line or so. Did you see what Donnie said about the AHL stint though? I did not. Someone asked him about it. He's like, yeah, he doesn't need one. Like he's an NHL player, and the it, the AHL is just chaotic, and he doesn't need that right now. I mean, it's fair. Max Pacioretty, he didn't. Go to the AHL usually when you're. I'm not saying he a needs tenured one. NHLer. I don't think he needs one. I just thought it was weird how he said, "Oh, the AHL is really, really chaotic. Like he doesn't need that. It's like, yeah, it's chaotic. He's a year removed from well, playing in the yeah. NHL full time, well, and you got a 19 year old leading the league in goals. According, you know, Jack Quinn was supposedly bad at defense, and Rochester yeah. comes up and is one of your better two way players. So, hey, I think well, I see where Donnie's coming from. I mean, Patrick Kane came back from injury pretty early, and he's doing really good. So maybe Jack Quinn will also do the same. This Here, episode's all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Here's why I I was thinking about this with the injuries, and because you're hearing it a lot from Granado, he's saying that you know a large part of this, the reason the offense isn't clicking is. It's the injuries, guys aren't healthy, which is fair if you're the head coach. Okay, if you're Don Granado, this is the team that you were given. And to this point, Tage has been out for an extended time. Tuck has been on and off the ice. Quinn has been gone since the start of the season. Now Jeff Skinner's hurt. You had Darlene out for a little bit. Uh, Samuelson has been on and off. 
Greenway's been out for a little bit now. Gergensen. Gergensen has been out for the past month or so. So if you're the coach, I get that excuse. But if I ever hear Kevin Adams get interviewed or he has a press conference and he uses that excuse. No, he doesn't get that excuse. He doesn't get that excuse. No. Because especially, you know, in the case of Jack Quinn, like we've talked about, he did nothing. We are ahead of schedule, and this has gone worse. The season has gone worse than we could have imagined, and they did nothing, nothing to counteract this. Even if he had gone out and signed Tomas Tatar, that would have at least been an attempt at something. He's not having a good season, and he's not even... Uh, he would not have solved any of the issues that are going on with this team structurally. But at least I could have said, okay, this was his this was his plan. That's who he was going after. I mean, he signed for $1.5 million in Colorado. Chump change. I mean, with the season he had last year, you could have bid as high as $5 million and I would have been like, okay. Like he was at close to 50 points last year. He was one of the best two-way players in the league. And... Nothing. Just nothing. There was nothing to counteract this. No, it was it, the plan was always run it back with the same guys. I mean, and I guess in a vacuum, looking at it from last year, with how good the offense was, I was just like, sure, why not? Run it back with the same guys. You got some defensive forwards, and then you got your uh, top nine, basically. Let's Let's go. Let's do this. Then Jack Quinn got hurt. Nobody addressed it. That was the that that was that was the that was the first little seed of doubt was Jack Quinn getting hurt, and them going, it's fine. We're gonna be okay. We don't need to. We don't need to get anyone. We'll, we'll just call someone up. I think what the weird part is about, and I've I've kind of been defending Kevin Adams more than you two, but we bring back basically the entire same lineup, and we were very good down the stretch. Yet we decide to change our system. With the same lineup. Like, that, I don't understand. Like, I, I know we were trying to get better defensively, but, like, it's not even like you brought in more guys to help you ease into this. It's the same exact lineup who was awful at defense last year, but was an offensive juggernaut, and you decided to just completely get rid of that. Like, that, I don't understand. It's the overcompensating. I I don't, I, don't know how we didn't see, I don't know how we didn't see it coming. It's the mentality, because... There's nothing like I don't think Granado took them into a room in the off season, did like this long film session and was like showing them highlights from last year and was like, Don't do this, don't do this. I think they just all they heard was mm-hmm. you gotta be more responsible. You gotta do this on the four check, you gotta have this on the back check, you gotta set up this way in the neutral zone. And I think it's just all in their heads because I mean, for example, okay. The Sabres were one of the worst teams when it came to zone entry denials last season. Now they're one of the best. How does that happen over a one-off season? You know, it, it wasn't. it's not Connor Clifton and Eric Johnson that are solving that issue. There's a clear philosophical change there. And, yeah, it has its merits. You improved in a category. But it's clear that the complete downturn in offensive metrics it's it's frank it's staggering it's the fact that it's gotten this far it is it, it, it i think like i agree it was all the mentality and i think part of their mentality was look you guys were amazing offensively last year the offense will come let's focus on the defense now because donnie said all last year how you know we'll focus on the offense let's develop that and you know, defense isn't that hard to teach. We'll figure it out. Now I think it's opposite. It's like the offense will come. Let's focus on defense. And it just it hasn't gone that way. That's that's exactly what we expected in the offseason, and that's what we hoped that the, the direction they were taking it in. If they were trying to do that, they didn't accomplish it. But I understand what they were trying to do with saying, okay, our offense is here. How do we solve the defensive side of the puck? And they thought it was, we need to tweak the system. Well, the tweak they made may have gone a little too far in the other direction because it's now screwed everything up because now there's there's almost no offense to be had of anywhere. And the defense is okay. At times, it has its 
you know, at times it has its good moments. At times it has its bad moments. And then you get – we've gotten, what, average goaltending this year? It, it's just – it's 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 almost the same hockey, but it's a little bit worse, and it's also way more boring to watch, which makes the team look way more uninspiring and less exciting. There's no flow to any of their breakouts. There's no flow on their – just in the neutral zone when they're trying to regroup and get in the zone, it it just feels so out of sync when you watch. And yeah, sometimes it works, but it feels like they they can't create on their own. It feels like everything it feels like they're almost more opportunistic this year. Like they're getting chances not by their own design. That whenever there's a, a lucky just they're getting lucky breaks, and that's where some of the offense is coming from. That's where their offense is coming from in these games where they're putting up good performances against stronger opponents. To a degree, it, it, you know, you you wa- you watch a game like against Vegas or against the Rangers, and you're you're left sitting there like, why can't they play like this more? And uh, I. I would say I don't know, but I just think it feels like they're playing their opponent's game. They're not playing their own, which is almost a, it's like a cliche that your youth hockey coach will say that you need to play your own game. But I think it's true. It's something that's Ky- that Kyle Poso has said previously, that they just need to be more like themselves. But like I said, it's all mental. They're all second guessing where they need to be positioned. They're all second guessing where they need to where the puck needs to go and where who they need to be covering. It, it feels like it's just this huge ball of indecision in in all of their heads. It looks really sloppy like when I'm watching. It the it's that the big thing for me this year has been the has been the breakouts and the break ins, which I've gone over so many times in other episodes. It's just the breakout is like Half the time it's they just like, flip it out like, of the zone. Yeah, it's like fli- it's either flip it or out of the zone. Or they don't flip it out. They flip and I've noticed the D. That, that's or someone or someone rims the puck and yep. someone's trying to knock the puck up the boards, but they lose possession of it. Or they rim it up and they have their. Ba- I feel like they're almost afraid to get hit too because they have they turn their back and they try and chip it up and they just give the puck away and it's gone. Possession's gone. There's just no. And then I see a team like Vegas, like. It impressed me so much. I know we won, but it impressed me so much just seeing how their breakout functioned. It was so clean and it was so quick. I was like, why can't we do that? Darlene has always been one of the guys to just chuck it out of the zone when he's in trouble. But now it feels like they all do it. it it's almost like they've been told, if you're not sure, just get it out of the zone. Where they would go for a more precise breakout last season and I guess yeah sometimes it would end up in the back of their net and that's kind of the kind of risk and reward that you played with last season but there's no you know when you take that away there's no crisp crisp breakouts there's no their transition play is just mitigated when 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 they're told to do that when how many times has there been a foul where they just are throwing the puck around in the zone and then everybody posting like what the hell is happening like the one the one shift, to, I think it was two games ago. It was Paterka, and it was, I think it was Power, and they were just literally throwing it to the opposing defenseman, and like that's what happens when you don't when you're just trying to get out of the zone. Sometimes you know you don't have enough energy, or you're being lazy, and that's what happens, and it goes in the back of your net. I think they just play up and down in their competition so much. I, I just think they underestimate. I think they see how good they can play, and then they underestimate the next team. Like after the Vegas game. There's one thing that I noticed because I watched all the interviews just because I was hanging out, really not doing anything. And the one thing the cousin said because he had a good game, um, someone asked him, you know, you know, you guys obviously haven't won consecutive games. Are you guys going to turn that around? He said, yeah, I think we have a really good opportunity to do that tomorrow. And I don't know, like I kind of interpret that as they're underestimating the next opponent. They're like, oh, yeah, we're playing really good. You know, we got a really good opportunity to finally string something together. And I just think that's part of it, that they they know how good they can play, that they just 
they take it for granted, and then they don't they don't play their game and play down to the opponents. But uh, yeah, I I like what Jonah said when it was more or less like they they're not playing their own game. They're trying to match what their opponent is playing. And you know what I think kind of set that trend into motion is the first two games of the year when they played the Islanders and the Rangers, and they I feel like they tried to play their game, and they realized their game was outmatched by two shut down defensive teams and then they may have overcompensated for that well exactly they walk it's almost like they walk into a building and the mentality is okay we're gonna out defend this team when even after all you've done you're still an average defensive team that should not be your mindset you you're not gonna out defend any any top 15 team in the league that's not like this is not it's not like the Sabres have transitioned overnight to a top 10 top 10 defense. They should never go into a game expecting to out duel in in a, in a defensive battle. It's poor messaging if that's the message. I just I just saw um Jay Fresh posted uh, a graph and um, maybe Jonah probably would have seen it, but I'll ask you Christian. So this is our goal differential in all situations. So obviously like plus goal differential means we're shooting like above expected. We're playing above expected. Below is below expected. We are only above four teams in the league. Can you name them? Yeah, I, th- I think I saw this. I know the Sharks were like an well, outlier yes, here. Yes, they're an outlier. They're that bad. I think it was the Sharks, the Blackhawks, mm-hmm. the the Ducks are right above us. Yeah, the, the Ducks are somehow. Um... Who else would be below us? Um, we face them tomorrow night. Oh, the Blue Jackets. Yep. And, and then your favorite team. The Islanders? Yep. Well, that makes sense. So that means that the Ducks are above us. The Canadians are above us. The Coyotes, I mean, they're better this year, but they're above us. The Flyers are above us. It's John Tortorella hockey, baby. It's it's just bad. Like Last year, we were probably top, like top five in the league in one of Easily. in one of these stats. Easily, yeah. and now we're bottom five in the league. It's just like there. It's it's funny um, because there's some people who we were arguing with. It was actually in our group chat on how like look, this team is just not bad, and your analytics can't deny that. I was like, our analytics suck. Like no one can even defend that anymore. There's not a single model anything that is positive about this team yeah it's like nobody's defending this team no. it's like the yeah the, the models show that this team is not good right now and again i don't i don't know where they go from here because again they they ran it back with the same team they may have tweaked the system a bit but again it's the same team it's like how much of a system change could tweak the offense that bad it's got to be like a, a mental thing, or it could be that Jack Quinn was way more important to this team than we thought. It could be. I mean, he was our best defensive player last year. He was arguably our best two-way player last year. He probably was our best two-way player, to be honest. I'm just really looking forward to having a fully healthy roster for once, and I really hope <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, yeah, I know. I hope we can get it by New Year's, two weeks from now. I mean, I I heard Jordan Greenway has like one more thing he's working through, and he's done. He's back. Um, Tuck, just some, you know, soreness. He should be back soon. Um, Jeff Skinner, I'm sure he's in concussion protocol right now. It could have. It, he's I, concussed. I, I don't know. I think they they usually say they're in the protocol, right? I think it's he fell a weird way. I want to say yeah, it's something his, in his arm or he, his back or something. Or some whiplash. But I'm just I'm looking forward to this team being fully healthy because I want to see what they can do and I want them to get healthy at a point where it's not too late to save the season but it just seems like with each game it's just slipping away more and more and we're just going to get to a point where the team's fully healthy but it's too late let's finish strong and let's gear up for next year and every single Sabres fan out there would rather hear you say that they want the team sold than that nonsense again. You're seeing people already say that. You're seeing people, you post something, sell the team. There's nothing new here. People have been saying that since 2014. Uh, I just, I can't imagine anybody's happy in the organization, like from top to bottom. Like obviously the players aren't happy. 
Obviously, Donnie's not happy. Kevin's not happy, and I'm sure Terry isn't happy. No, I'm like, sh- I bet no one is happy. They're all like, this is unacceptable. No, I'm sure Terry's not happy, but here's the thing. He's going to he's gonna take this the wrong direction. Terry's going to be like, oh, we're not gritty enough. We need to bring in some hard-nosed hockey players. Terry, bless your heart. <laughs> Let the hockey guys operate the team. And if you think they're not doing a good enough job, then I guess reevaluate. But still, like, don't. It, the best thing you could be as an owner is a hands-off owner that spends money. You know, Jerry, once the owner gets their nose into everything, it's not great. Jerry Jones is doing it right. I need to take right. more control of this team. Yeah, yeah, Jerry Jones. <laughs> Do you imagine that's what happens in the off season? It's funny how they're still called America's team and they haven't been relevant in 25 years. Mm-hmm. At the start of the season, when when we were all laughing at the Edmonton Oilers about how bad they were doing. Their underlying metrics were saying that they should be so much better, and it was just bad goaltending. And now they're going on a run. It's not like if the Sabres somehow go on this heroic run, make the playoffs, or even just make a final push, it'll come out of nothing. It'll there. There is no telltale signs except they play good against good teams. That's it. Or if they make that heroic w- run. It's because of the goaltending, which is a hilarious statement. That's the only thing that, that the goaltending is the only area where you could be like, okay, that might if they go on this unreal run, it might be because of them, which is kind of insane to say. But they're getting good performances out of their two top goalies. Yeah, Levi's been great. UPL has been good. There's not much to say outside of that. <laughs> Like Levi's been awesome. Since Levi, he came back. yeah, since he's he, come back, yeah, he is. He's the guy. He learned he, that guy's the guy. I don't want to live in Rochester anymore. So he took you know. one look around and he's like, "I'm getting out of here." I'm gonna say something that might be unpopular with my two co-hosts here. I'm not. I haven't been impressed with UPL, and I know he hasn't been awful, and he has not cost this team victories in his performances outside of giving the puck away and giving the coyotes their first goal but the sabers didn't score a goal in that, that game the sabers so best it's pass not, of the night yeah I, yeah so the sabers didn't score a goal in that game so i can't put that all on him but i don't know i just i, I again it comes down to me the bottom line is with him is it comes down to consistency and that's one thing i just have not seen out of him and i feel like you two are culprits of being like, oh, he's great. He's what are doing you great. About? And you're, then he's down. You're telling me. Yes. You're telling Jonah. me I've been a UPL defender? Not. A, are you kidding yes, me? Yes, Jonah. Just acknowledge the fact he's been good. Shift your that, blame to that, Eric Comrie if you want. That's all I'm saying. Eric Comrie's been MIA for three months. Where has that guy been? He, he came back from injury, lost two games, and they've lost confidence. I'm just saying. I can't blame. Been put on waivers? Uh, they don't have I, to. I it's think the same it, thing with Bryce. I think it's coming. But. I, I just don't think you can blame UPL. Like, even the Coyotes game, we didn't score a goal. Like, I, I said We had that. no chance. I, I was that. mad at him. I didn't think he played an unreal game, but, like, he gave him a chance to win. His turnover came at the worst time, and I would have wanted a save on that breakaway. But it's still I, I a breakaway. It's a breakaway, yeah. and they didn't – like, it's not like they lost that game. If they lost that game 2-1, to one, I'd be like, okay, man, like, you gave the puck away, and you – didn't make the big save on the third period but otherwise like they didn't score so it it's it doesn't a- matter i yeah that's what i said but still again like when he, he had that and any, i didn't think okay he didn't play great against colorado no he didn't play great but the, the, same thing the team played awful yeah awful in the first well okay they play awful in the first period dominate the second period and then like totally pack it in in the third I, I know the team itself hasn't given him the best opportunities, at least, you know, to put him in in a, in a place to win games. But I just, again, it's, he's just, when the team was good, like, it just, they have, they, there's no consistency out of him. And right. I haven't, I've yet to see it. And you, Levi, if you're telling me that this team plays different with Levi in that than with Lukanen in, in that, then you are sorely mistaken because this team has been the one thing that they're consistent of uh, the one thing that they are consistent about is that they play the same friggin way 
all the goddamn time. The one thing I'll say is that right now, if Levi is really I mean, he's playing like a number one goaltender right now. It's only been four games, okay? I'm I'm not gonna get ahead of myself, but with how good Levi's playing, if this is how UPL is playing as your backup, you cannot be unhappy. That's he's, fine. Yes, it, that, and I'm perfectly okay with Lukanen being the backup goalie. But I'm saying Levi's he's the top. He's number one. Remember, remember everyone a few weeks ago when everyone was signing UPL apology forms after one game. Okay, you he, act like you act he like he was a very good. You act like it was a three-two win or something. He played very good the first the, whole month and a half. Why are you putting me in this position? <laughs> I the, the, like I am the UPL hit. Like I am the guy who rags on him when it's not necessary. You're just trying to shift blame. Like point of go on anybody else. We need audio clips talk, for the Twitter, Jay. Talk, <laughs> talk about. Talk about Mateus Samuelson or someone. I don't know. Go off on someone who's actually not playing. Every time a goal is scored on UPL, I just wait for Jonah's tweet, and then I wait for all the <laughs> UPL stands to come into our mentions because that happens every time. Look, I wanted to save on the breakaway. I'm sorry, guys. I, I just like it. I Like Dylan O'Brien, who even is that? I'm sorry. That's – I fell asleep. It was <laughs> Dylan O'Brien. Are you serious? That dude, he looks like a lumberjack. Are you – we let him score him? He went far that, down. No, no, He went far no, down. Now, now, I – you know what? No. No, Lukanen. Put Comrie as a backup. That is atrocious. You let We let Dylan O'Brien score on us? Oh, my God. You need to go watch it, dude. It was a beautiful goal. Dude. It was a nice goal. Off a great fan from Ryan Johnson. Yes. About the 10th time I've seen him fan a slap shot. Ryan Johnson and Owen Power might be the worst shooting pair in oh the NHL. Oh, my God. Well, Power, How many times do they fan on a I, shot? It's insane. Power is fanned a lot. That is one thing I have noticed, especially when he tries to creep in and shoot. He fans on the puck a lot. That's, the, that's one of the things that, you know, you know, a lot of people like to poke holes in his game. He's good, but people poke holes. It's a lot of – that's one of the places people like to, you know, jab is that he – He's he he's not good controlling the puck sometimes. I mean he he plays well in the defensive zone and he's when he plays well he's very quiet about it. But other times you know like when he flubs a pass or he loses a battle in the zone, a lot of people see that and then everyone you know jumps on the Owen Power, scratch him. I don't know. <laughs> sit him in the press box, <sighs> dude. <laughs> the scratching of young play. The guy's like, it's not going to kill him to have him sit in the box for one game. Why? You're going to take one of your better. Who are you going to put in there? Jacob Bryson? Uh, are you I, out of your not mind? Anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. I'm, I'm not worried. I, power's been great. Okay. I'm not worried about him. And I'm not worried about Ryan Johnson. But I think the one thing that they said about him when he was in the AHL is that he just has to slow down his game sometimes. Like he plays too quick. And that's the issues I've been seeing with Ryan Johnson. He tries to do too much or he doesn't take his time, and then it leads to a mistake. Dylan O'Brien. I fell so I should I, not fe- have mentioned this. I fell asleep around the third period and I woke up it had to be fi- I was out fifteen minutes because the TV was still on and I saw two nothing. I was just like, ah, game over, shut it off. Didn't even check who scored the f- the second goal. Didn't know how it was scored. I was just like, it's probably just some, you know, we got worked in our own zone and it's in the net. It, if you would have told me it was Dylan O'Brien on a breakaway, I would have thought you were pulling the prank of all pranks on me. Because I rem- <laughs> remember earlier in the season when he tried to attack another player. He just threw his gloves off and he tried to attack another player. It's kind of it's kind of sick though. It's old time hockey right there. But <laughs> I was, <laughs> oh my god, no, I, I all right. Let's let's just all right. Season's over. Pack what it the out. worst part? I don't know why we've been saying uh, Dylan. His name's Liam O'Brien. <laughs> we didn't even know his first name. I just know it was O'Brien. Sorry. I guess Dylan O'Brien is an actor. What was he okay, in? I actually thought <laughs> the Maze Runner. Yeah, I was gonna Maze say Runner? I there thought it was that guy. I'm there not, we go. I just and Teen Wolf. I don't know anybody. Team, teen Teen oh Wolf God. or Team Wolf. Teen T E E N. This podcast is a shit show. This Jesus. is all over the place. This is what the Sabers is doing to us. We didn't even introduce ourselves. I'm hey, I'm JP. <laughs> yeah, I'm Christian. I'm talking. 
That's Christian. That's Jonah. We're having a great time. He was also in Charlie Brown, Black Blockhead's Revenge. I don't know what that Which is. Which one was that about? It's a short film. I don't think it was a... Aren't all the Charlie Browns a short film? Probably. I don't even know if it was like an actual Charlie Brown, but I, I don't recognize it. And, oh, he's in Curb Your Enthusiasm. Okay, I guess I can... I knew that guy. When you were saying Dylan O'Brien, I was like, why didn't you speak think, up? Because I couldn't name more than three players in the Coyotes. I don't know his name. It could have been Dylan O'Brien for all I know. I do remember it was O'Brien. Let's talk Let's talk about another positive. Let's talk about positive. Zach Benson. Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. Debatably our best player this year. It, yeah, it doesn't and, even and get and me excited. No, though. it doesn't. And you know what's you know what makes it worse is he's that at 18, eighteen years he's it, eighteen and it's worse. Yeah, is that an eighteen year old is your best uh, offensive forward on this team? He's been awesome. He has been awesome, but that's so bad. It's that an eighteen year old is the best forward on your team this year, objectively, probably. Maybe you can make an argument for who Skinner because well, he's been healthy. I would say Paterka, Paterka, Paterka okay. Middlestad, like they're up there, but. Benson's been like the the I mean obviously he's eye popping. He's been their best defensive forward, which is insane. But it do, it doesn't even feel good. It, it genuinely does not feel good to talk about the fact he's their best player right now or one of. I think it feels great. It's a great draft pick. We got him at 13th overall. That Coyotes, yeah, they might have beat us, but they passed on Zach Benson twice. So suck on that. Dylan O'Brien. Who the Liam hell? Liam O'Brien. Who the hell is Dylan O'Brien? I know it's Liam O'Brien. I don't even know who Dylan O'Brien was. I don't watch Teen Wolf like JP does. <laughs> I know him from Maze Runner. <laughs> the hell's a Maze Runner? Ma- that was a popular movie. F- from when? Okay. When? When is when was the Maze Runner? It was probably what like was five, that? ten years ago. That was that was the dystopian. It was all of those movies: Maze Runner, Hunger Games, dis- um, Divergent. It was all those. Div- Divergent. I remember the Hunger Games. Okay, I think I remember Divergent. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like teen girls now, talking about the Hunger Games. And that might All right, fellas. When I you don't know Taylor if he's Swift acted tickets. since. That might have been the end of his career. So, Okay, so where are we at with Granado? Uh, I think... After the DJ Smith firing, he's kind of the next one who's kind of got his seat warm right now. Think if so. if we see more of the same down the next few weeks, and if the team starts to get healthy and we still see more of the same, I could make a case for him being. No, I would say not a midseason firing, just because the um the season will probably be lost at that point. So I could see him being gone next off season. I was going to say, I think if we get healthy and we are continuing to play bad, then maybe he'll be a late season firing. But I think if we were to do it like now or even in the next month or so, we'd kind of be scapegoated just because we haven't been fully healthy. Yeah. You know, obviously, like the players are underperforming. You can't completely blame that, Donnie. Um, but I think if this continues for another few months, then, I mean, he deservingly show, so should be in the hot seat considering he's, he's been – our Sabres head coach for longer than you think. Well, actually, not as long as you think, but he's eighth longest in the league right now, it's, which is insane. It's That's the most mind-boggling stat I've seen, is that he is the eighth longest tenured head coach. It just shows how like the NHL just turnover, man. It's crazy. But I think if this team can't make a push for the playoffs – I mean, they made a push for the playoffs last year. The expectations were playoffs this year. I feel like if they don't make the playoffs, he should just be gone anyways. I just, I, I, I can't give him, like, they won't do it. They won't do it. Unless, barring an 18-game losing streak, it's just not going to happen. Look at how much it took for someone like DJ Smith to get fired. Like, you hit, you need to have rock bottom. You can't just be mediocre like the Sabres are. Um, and he's got scapegoats. The core isn't performing. There's injuries. You know, obviously, obviously, like a lot of this falls on him, but at the same, it's like the corporate. Sometimes, like I, I just don't know what to blame. It like everything is going wrong. Feels like the system. I mean, the system, which is obviously, obviously on him, and like it's just so um, complicated. But 
Like you need individual performance at some point. Yeah. I think if this season finishes like it's going right now, like if they if they are to finish, um, where are they right now? Probably like twenty fifth in the league or so. If they get the seventh or eighth pick again, then and we're back to square one. Then his seat is probably a bit warm to start next year. But I really, uh, I really don't think that. If if we're if we're talking about the draft for a second, like I d- I don't want to make this pick. I don't want a first round pick next year. Like what what are we gonna do? We have we have enough of these prospects. It's like we can't. Not all of them are gonna be on this team. You need to start. You need to package a few guys and get like a couple. You know, maybe a couple key guys to bring into your lineup. You know, maybe someone like a, a Ryan Reeves. You know. <laughs> like a, <laughs> <laughs> a Patrick Kane. He had us in the first half. Not gonna lie. Let's go get Celebrini. But I, I, okay, maybe maybe overcompensating and you know you know throwing your draft capital away isn't the best idea. But it hasn't been done since you know maybe like Bots. Did he really do much? I mean Murray was he traded. All, I mean they Murray was all over the place. They've traded first round picks, but never ours. I don't know. It, it, I think I, I think get just, I get not wanting to make the pick because we've been we've been here so many goddamn times before. But, yeah, but imagine Celebrini on this team. I mean, come on. Okay, we win the draft lottery, then fine, make the pick, and then he plays next year. But it's not happening. It's not. I don't know, Batman. He he needs he he loves the Sabers. We need the the hockey market. Okay, we're one of the best small markets. He needs to He'd revitalize say like, us. Look, guys, you've won two lotteries. You've had all these top ten picks. You're not. You no. You're not getting. You're not getting and anything. Figure anymore. it out. Like I said, though, I I just I don't think they would. They're not gonna fire him. There's Probably just no. Not. I don't think there's a point in even entertaining it. It needs to get like, really it, bad. It, like it's not gonna change my opinion that. <sighs> I think he should be just because I don't. He hasn't shown he can take them to the next level yet. Even last like last season was fun and we missed that but that team was f- flawed they were awful defensively and now you're seeing to even improve that they had to give up so much and to this point it just doesn't seem like he's the type of coach that can balance it and it just seems like stuff we've talked about before it just you know we we kind of expected him not to get this team like you know to that next level. It was more of a development role, and now I feel like we're kind of meeting that threshold, and now we're like attached to him. But I I don't I don't know. Well, we'll see what happens in the next few weeks. I would say uh, I think there's other changes in the coaching staff that should be done before Donnie, at the very least. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Matt Ellis has kind of exacerbated his time here. Especially with him running the power play and it well, being as bad as it is, pretty much the reason I would fire him. But again, that could that could lie on the players too. Like I don't know, they just you know we don't even know. Like we don't even know if Matt Ellis is the one to run it. They that's don't designate true. a special teams coach. Yeah, that's true. So everybody's pointing their hate at Matt Ellis. We don't even we don't even know. It could be Granado doing it. Who knows? Who knows at this point? Okay, do we want to? talk some wider NHL for a little bit. Yeah, sure. Why don't we check in on old pal Patrick Kane? <laughs> well, um, I, I want to say I couldn't see this coming, but I don't, I don't think that that would be accurate to say. No, we saw it coming. Yeah, <laughs> this is, yeah, it's, it's fun. It's funny. I, I enjoyed this <laughs> because like, <laughs> at the, I remember like, Throughout the season, it's just been, you know, Buffalo and Ottawa were like, you know, they're like, oh, we're going to be the better team. We're going to be the better team. Both of us, very underwhelming. Detroit has passed expectations, and now their whole team, the, all their fan base is like, oh, look, like the the Sabres and the Senators fans were all arguing who was going to be better. Well, it's us. Well, you just got yourself one shiny Patrick Kane, and you know what he's done? He's brought a lot of defensive liability to your team because, what, they're 1-5 in, in their last six? Uh, How are they doing tonight? They were down four nothing. Let me <laughs> let me. <laughs> so one in six. Let me check in on how they're doing. Um, I mean, imagine 
they were up four nothing in a game and ended up losing five to the to sharks. Four. <laughs> to the down, sharks. They're down four nothing. To the to sharks. sharks. <laughs> no, when they were up four nothing, they lost and they four three tonight. Four game. So they're one in six with Patrick Kane. Yes, I think it's one. And in what six, he? Right? How many? What he is? He has, he has th- one goal. I believe three points. One goal. Three one points assist. in seven games. Three points in seven games. And this this was the this was the marquee free agent that coming off of a hip resurfacing surgery everyone thought was going to be good as new except for a select few people in Buffalo New York who saw this coming. So he did he did have two assists tonight, uh, and tonight was the first game where he was on the ice for a five on five goal four in seven games. What's his plus minus? <laughs> I'm I was curious. I was gonna mention that as well. As someone who's not a big plus minus guy, um, oh my God. I'll just take it game by game. Okay, minus two his first game. Oh, uh, good start. Even the okay. second game. All right. Minus two. Okay. Minus one. Okay. Minus one. Oh, he's mi- I don't I don't know what he is tonight. Um, but one of those assists he had was on the power play. So, uh, well, actually, I know he was he was at least. He had to b- at least be even at five on five because mm-hmm. I did see the 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 one goal that he was on for tonight where he was just oh, in Lord. no man's land in just another stratosphere. So not in a good way. Like so he's like minus five through like six games played. Oh, he's, he's minus seven. He's minus seven. Oh, he's minus, minus seven going into tonight. Oh Lord. Yeah, Man. remember all those people that that love their plus minus that also love Patrick Kane. Well, here you go. Plus minus is minus seven. You know what that means? He's bad. Well, he's got four points in seven games, so I guess he's starting to pick up points here. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> I, 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 the the Detroit Red Wings obviously aren't picking up wins with him, but a good good for him. He's got four points in seven games. It's almost like their shooting bender that they're on is not sustainable, and they're finally falling back to a. Uh, Falling back to the mean. God. I just uh, want one, one goddamn season where I could, you know, just spit in the face of my division rivals and be like, <laughs> "That's yeah, the worst we're part." Finally, number one. You can't even laugh at that, and you can't even no. laugh at the next team we're going to talk about, the Ottawa Senators. They finally can DJ Smith. Finally, it's <laughs> it's honest to God, it's it is amazing. It got to this point. He has been their coach for. I think five or six years now. Wow. Five, six years. Like, we're in year three of Granado here. Imagine having like this. Like, twice as long. Oh. <laughs> if, it, if it keeps going this way twice as long, that is torture. And did you – so, um, DJ Smith gets fired this morning, um, but they let him run the team practice this morning. Get a little bit of a fun practice. And let him do a post-practice press conference. He's like, yeah, I think we're going to be doing it. It's like, DJ, can you come over here? Like, I got to talk to you in my office real quick. He's like, oh, sorry, guys. I'll see you in a minute. It's like, sorry. <laughs> Just got to catch up with my boss real quick. Yeah. I'm sure it's nothing. Yeah, we're letting you go. Oh, like, man. what? I mean, yeah, that's just another. It is, a, it is amazing that Buffalo, Ottawa, and to an extent, Detroit. We're just arguing all off season about who was the better team, whose rebuild was headed in the better direction, and here we are. Same spots. Two of them stink, and the other one's just kind of okay. Nope. Buffalo Sabers stank. <laughs> they stank. All right. Why don't we do something that we haven't we haven't done this in a long time because you know he's kind of been out of the picture. We do have some Lawrence Pilot talk, and uh, I'll let JP take this away because that man was trying to murder my guy, and he should be locked up. He should never put on ice skates again, and he is a criminal. He was, I mean, that was blatant. He was trying to go for Pilot, and I'm not going to lie to you. At first, when I saw the video, I was like, oh, that sucks. Uh, I, I know it was Pilot. I was like, oh, that sucks. And when I found out it was Pilot, I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> not him. I not just, him. I just don't, like, like I get, I've been I've been kind of hit over the boards in that way before. Why are you flailing your like legs? Like yeah. That. yeah. That one was really bad. Why are you flailing your legs like that? Like, what are you doing? Like, it's not hard to just, you know, you know, 
reset your equilibrium and just throw yourself back over the boards. You don't have to flail your, especially knowing you have skates on. Like, come on, dude. It's not that you gotta you gotta have some common sense it here. It happens that sometimes your leg goes up in the air, but he was literally like flailing. Like the, the, it was up and down. One, the one that actually hit Pilot was egregious because yeah. he he fluttered twice and mm-hmm. then did another one. Like it, oh my! Like I'm like I'm watching it now, and the second one, like he flutters his left leg straight up, and it's his right leg on like on the further side from Pilot. He brings it across his body and nails him in the neck. It could have been bad. It could have been. Oh. Been this really, would have been a sad really episode. Bad. This would have been really sad. It would have been a sad episode. Yeah, this could have gotten bad. It's just weird how it's like, you know, it's like that when it rains, it pours, like after mm-hmm. the Adam Adam Johnson stuff, and then this happens. It's just weird how these they just happen all at once, like in a row like this. I feel like more neck guard man, mandates are going to be coming because of this. I will say, since you brought up Pilot, Jonah can attest. I am 1-0 with the Savers game with the Lawrence Pilot jersey on. My Lawrence Pilot Amherst jersey on. So if you're at a Savers game and you see someone with the Amherst Lawrence Pilot jersey, you know that is me. <laughs> we were walking in the street away from the <laughs> arena. <laughs> and we're just crossing the street, going onto the sidewalk, and all of a sudden we just hear in the background, is that a Lawrence Pilot jersey? <laughs> and he's like, that's awesome. <laughs> it's like, I hey, got- buddy, you lost? <laughs> <laughs> I got quite a few looks at me during the game. I'm not going to lie to you. They're like... Oh, an Amherst jersey. Lawrence Pilot. <laughs> <It's> like, what? <laughs> hey, I never got to wear it while I was here. So, hey, we're 1-0. and I will wear that jersey until we lose with them. <laughs> All right. As we, can, as we begin to wrap up here, we can... We didn't really, I guess, officially address the actual Sabres news that happened today. I guess we'll start with the more minor of the two. Jacob Bryson placed on waivers, presumably to make room for the possible return of Jack Quinn. Yeah, that's so, yeah, it's the right move. Jacob Bryson hasn't suited up for a game since I want to say November fourth. He looked good in that game too. He didn't look bad. And it almost it makes you wonder, like why like even just not just to work him into one game or to not send him down earlier. I mean I feel like a team that's almost a disservice to him. Yeah, I feel like a team that's really in need of defense right now, they could it, it, I I would I would make a case to pick him up. Mm-hmm. He's good. He's he's good there enough are worse, player. There are worse bottom pair defensemen. Yeah. yeah. If you know, if the Sabres' defense was not so killed with injuries last season, you know, there probably wouldn't be such a hate train for him. But the fact that there was, and most nights he was playing on the top pair, it's uh, it's not a role for him. So mm-hmm. it's just kind of an unfortunate situation. But there are worse defenseman in the league i i right now i i would take jacob bryson over counter clifton hey matt Irwin is still in the league i'm pretty sure oh my god <laughs> matt Irwin. matt Irwin. haven't heard that name in a while we didn't say steve Irwin by accident <laughs> mixing it up with somebody like someone that's actually more famous in pop culture where's victor antipen is he in russia he went back home we can call him He's, he, he, he probably he probably has the Sabres numbers blocked. Probably, yeah. We've, we haven't made, you know, great business connections over this drought. <laughs> it hasn't been great. No, relationships have word, been strained. Word on the street about the Sabres organization can't be too great. Oh, God, no. Well, I guess there is one final depressing thing we can talk about. Uh, it is kind of funny, though. The New York Jets... Have now set are now the leader uh, in all major North American sports playoff droughts. Let's go, baby! Still was, but now they've officially hit 13 years. Let's go! We're not last. Let's go! We're not too far behind. We're about three months away. If uh, if, if Rogers comes back next year and he takes the team to the playoffs, it, it, it's gonna be us. If Leonard Floyd did not destroy Aaron Rodgers' ankle or Achilles, we'd be. The Sabres might be at the top of the list right yeah. now. It's funny. It was like it's been it's always been Buffalo teams. It was the Bills for how God knows how long. And then the Sabres almost just replaced them. Thank yeah, you. Wasn't it Thank the, God for the Jets. Wasn't the only team above the Bills the uh wasn't it the Bengals? I think that was about it. That was wasn't that a playoff? I think that was playoff was draft. Maybe a playoff, no, playoff it was win. A play, it was a playoff win. win. It was, they made the playoffs. But it was longer, like by a few years. No, it, like was, it was like ninety five. No, the the um before the Bengals won their playoff game was nineteen ninety. And then it was the Lions in like ninety two or ninety one, and then it was the Bills in ninety five. Yeah. 
The Lions Can't wait for that day. The Lions still haven't won a playoff game in 30 years. And before that, you guess guess when their last playoff win before 1991 was. They won one. Wasn't it like 1963? Yeah, it was 62, I think. John F. Kennedy was alive. Was still pre- <laughs> he was still kicking. He was still president. <laughs> They've won one playoff game in 50 years. No, 60 years. It's crazy. With Matt Stafford and Calvin Johnson. At least they had fun Barry players. Barry Sanders. You know, they can talk about great players throughout their drought. We have to talk about, like, yeah, Andre Mazaros. And that's true. <laughs> Anders Lindback. Scott. Wh- Matt Irwin. What's his name? Uh, Tory Mitchell. Tory Mitchell. Jason Kasdorf. And our Corsi King, Dalton Smith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's almost it's almost it's almost better that the NHL is not as big of a sport as it could be. We uh we have dragged. a lot of slack. We'd be, <laughs> be getting a dragged. lot of slack. <laughs> Speaking of Detroit, I mean, you want to talk about <laughs> you want to talk about bad streaks. The uh, Detroit Pistons, they in a they're not doing so well right now. The the, the last time they won a game, the Rangers hadn't won the World Series yet. <laughs> That's how long it's they been. They can't even luck into a win. Dude, that's so bad. <laughs> I remember the the 18 game losing streak under Kruger. I thought was like I thought it was years. I can only imagine what 23 games. Yeah, that was like I mean, that was like you would think, "Oh, we're never going to see that in sports again." Nope. <laughs> 2 years later, we get a streak that's already surpassed and it's, it's still going. Yeah, it's still going. They haven't won. All right, let's look ahead at the uh the schedule here to start to wind things down. So Tomorrow or tonight, depending on when you're listening, they are. They have Columbus at home. On Thursday, they are visited by the Toronto Maple Leafs. And Leafs on, hate week. And on Saturday, they are back at MSG against the New York Rangers. Oh, oh boy! But and, and then Wednesday's the Bruins. And so then, we had a great streak. And you get yep. Then you get Boston back at home next Wednesday. Uh. But so here's the thing. So we talked about this a bit last episode, but after that Bruins game. They get a soft schedule. Just to recap, they play Columbus at home. They're at Ottawa. They're at Montreal. They're at Pittsburgh. Seattle's at home. They face Ottawa at home. Vancouver at home. San Jose at home. Chicago at home. Tampa at home. In Anaheim. In Los Angeles. And then in San Jose. Like, It's not a hard it, schedule. It is now or never. Like If they go 500 during this stretch... It, it's done. Like yeah. there's no. Yeah. This is as soft as you're, as you're going to get all season. Um, we're going to talk about it as the schedule approaches. It's now or never. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've said it before. If you can get, I mean, it's not looking like a possibility anymore. But if you get to 500 somehow by January 1st and you're healthy, maybe, maybe. But probably not. I mean, aren't we only mm. like six points out of a playoff spot right now? But I think we have games in hand. Yeah, I'm not even. I'm not even thinking about the playoff I, picture. No. I heard someone say that. I think on WGR. There's no point. Not we, until you're above 500. I think our playoff odds are in the single digits right now. I think Money Puck had us at 11, <laughs> which is so generous. generous. Very generous. Appreciate. <laughs> that. No one else got me. I know Money Puck playoff odds got me. Amen. I'm looking forward to losing to the Blue Jackets tomorrow night and then beating the Leafs and the Rangers because that's <laughs> this is good. What, you know what? It's exactly. Toronto, New York, Boston. They're stacking the opponents. Yep. This the, Here we go. That's how we get going. We play the <laughs> good teams. Uh, Could you imagine? Like, can you imagine if we actually call that? If, if <laughs> the turning point? Another turning point? <laughs> they lose tomorrow, but tomorrow's the last straw. They're beating Toronto, they're beating New York, and they're beating Boston. Their first winning streak of the year is going to be against the Leafs, the Rangers, and the Bruins. And then they're going to lose to the Blue Jackets again. At home. Yep. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that somber note, um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can follow us at, at the Saber Report. Get updates with the pod at, at Saber Report Pod. Follow us on Instagram. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And on, follow us on TikTok. And... Uh, other than that, give a quick shout out to the uh, 
Buffalo Sports Talk podcast, obviously a big win against Dallas this week. That will be discussed and more later this week before uh, their Saturday matchup against the Chargers. But other against than that... Easton Stick. A little hockey. <laughs> a little hockey reference. If we lose the Easton Stick... It's, it, it, this could get, if we lose to the Chargers, <laughs> it'll be... This is, it's all over. It pack everything if in. If we lose to in a hockey brand, that will be bad. And Let's also, quick shout out to the Bandits. Yes. First and only banner raising of my lifetime. Yes. And m- maybe the only one of our lifetime. What it about was 2008. A- yeah, oh, that is right. true. We okay. didn't have one. But I was there. It was a fun time. It was a good game. Um, the people I was with, they know who I was with. They were very angry at, um, at Vince in the first uh, the first half. But then the second half, he I showed say? up. And, what can I say? And... Um, What's his name? Josh Byrne, uh, one of the best athletes in Buffalo. Had like four goals, two assists. He was awesome. But it was a great game, great atmosphere. It was close to a sellout, not nearly. But hey, the the Bandits are playing good. You know, I I really thought that we had a chance at a one Buffalo weekend. Bandits. The Sabers won their first game. The Bills won, but the Bills lose it to the Coyotes, and not a one Buffalo weekend. So I'm guessing that the next time we will talk to you will be after, what did I say? I think the Rangers game is on Saturday night, so we'll talk to you before the Bruins game next Wednesday. So until next time, thanks for listening. Feel free to leave a review, and go Sabres. Go Sabres. Go Sabres.